Hello and welcome to the Swine Disease Reporting System. This is the report number 53. My name is Edison Magalhães here at Iowa State University. My name is Guilherme Cesar here at Iowa State University. Daniel Linhares is also at Iowa State. And today we're going to cover the findings from the SDRS related to the month of June 2022. But today we have the pleasure of having here uh, Dr. Fernando Bortoloso uh, joining the SDRS podcast. Dr. Bortoloso currently serves as a full-time professor at the uh, Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil with a research focus on swine reproduction and management. Dr. Bortoloso got his DVM from the same university and his PhD in, in animal reproduction from the University of Veterinary Medicine at Hanover in Germany, where he also spe specialized in swine reproduction. Before becoming a professor, Dr. Bortoloso finished his postdoc at URGS in Brazil. And welcome, Dr. Bortoloso, to our podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here today joining with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's, it is a great pleasure for me to be here with you guys uh, today. I'm here attending the Swine, um, Swine Day conference at the Iowa State, and I appreciate very much the invitation to be here with you. Thank Thanks you. again, Dr. Bortolos. We know how busy you are, so really appreciate your time here today. Before we start the discussion, Guilherme, why don't you uh, walk us through the main findings for uh, this swine disease reporting system from this month? Yes, uh, for the month of June, uh, for beginning for the first page of PERS virus, we have a decreased percentage of positive submissions in all the age categories. And based on the last year, this was expected for this month of June. And also because we are starting the summer season right now, that also contributes to the decreased number of cases. And we, on the other hand, what is not good is that we have a high number of L1C variant detection for this month compared to the last years. And mainly these, these detections are coming from wind to market category. Moving now to influenza and mycoplasma, both pathogens are within the expected values for the month of June that was also expected for this month and also expected for the summer season. And our advisory group highlighted for mycoplasma that this decreased positive submissions that we have in all the age categories could be a good sign of successful elimination protocols that they are doing in farms to eliminate this pathogen. On the other hand, when we are talking about PED in enteric coronavirus, uh, even though we have a decrease in all the age categories and number of positive submissions, PED is still like above the expected levels for this month compared with the last years. And when we move to the state-specific baseline, uh, we have right now we reach six states that are above the number of positive submissions uh, for this month of June. And these states are Nebraska, Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, Kansas, and North Carolina. And continue Ooh. talking about this activity, uh, we, when we, we break down for age category, we have like since February, Iowa, it was the only state that we have a number of positive submissions for cell farms above the baseline. And for this month mm -hmm. of June, we have also Iowa, Kansas, and North Carolina. But if we talk about winter market, is it still responsible for most of the positive submissions? If we take the data from May and June right now, 49.9% of all the positive cases are coming from the win to market category. Moving to the page of PCV2, we also have increased activities of win to market category. And according to our advisory group, part of this increase seems more related with the PCV2 genotype D that are circulating more in the farms. And also some vaccine companies are submitting more tests to validate their products. However, the, the advisory group also highlighted that they, have, they are getting more results from tissue submissions with histopathological lesions related with lymphoid depletion and also lower CT values in these PCV2 cases. These findings maybe are related with more clinical cases that we are having in farms in this period of the year. And for the last page, for the disease diagnosis page, according to our advisory group, is nothing too extreme but we are seeing more E. coli and salmonella cases in the farms, but rotavirus is still the main enteric endemic disease in cell farms. And Daniel, these are the main findings for the month of June. 
So long story short, some PCV2 activity, but the, the most concerning is PD, right? That it's, uh, it was supposed to be back to baseline, but still uh, out of control in several states in the Midwest and grow Finnish pigs. Exactly. So high alert for biosecurity, biocontainment to get that virus uh, where, where it is right now and avoid further spread, right? Exactly. And mainly because we are having this activity in cell farms as well. So it's not only winter finish, but cell farms breaks. No, great, great discussion, guys. Thanks, Daniel and, and Guilherme for bringing the, the updates from the, the month of June. Now we're going to move uh, to our, our conversation with, with Dr. Fernando Bertoloso, where we're going to focus on prairie mortality specifically, which is a, a, hot, a hot topic uh, globally in the swine industry. And Dr. Bertoloso is an expert in this arena. They have been conducting, his team has been conducting uh, many research on this, on this area. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Dr. Bertoloso today here with us sharing his knowledge and what we can leverage uh, between, for example, the Brazilian swine industry and the American swine industry. So Dr. Bertoloso, this is a, a hot topic, as, as I mentioned, the, the pre-winning mortality, uh, overall uh, peak survivability, but each country has its, own, its singularities regarding the best practices to apply in salt farms, different scenarios, could you give us an overall situation of the U.S. and Latin America uh, on pre-winning mortality? Uh, well, uh, when you compare uh, different situations like uh, South America and North America, we have, we have some differences on that. And it is important to point out these differences be be because we, before we compare both uh, situations. First of all, in South America, especially in Brazil, we have, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that we have more farin assistance as compared with you guys here in North America. This is uh, one situation. It means that we can uh, do a better uh, job related to day one care with the piglets. And this is a par particularity that's uh, somehow it's not easy to, to implement here in your farms, or mm -hmm. sometimes we, we should try to do that a little bit better than we are doing. Because if you do the mm -hmm. same thing, you are going to, to have the same results, you know. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fernando, can you talk a little bit more about those practices that you uh, refer, refer to as day one? Right, uh, maybe perhaps cross fostering. So, what, what are the actual practices that would impact in key performance indicators in the south farm? Suckling pigs. Yeah, I would say that uh, day one care are based on three main things the drying the pig, yeah? mm -hmm. warming the piglet, and also uh, the colostrum ingestion. I think that these are the three major points that uh, we have to take care in the first day of life. Uh, in this way, if you have a, a farin assistance or if you can have a farin assistance in, in a big cell population, you can start this day one care earlier and do a better job. This is the main uh, things that I think that we should do. Regarding cross-fostering, I know that cross-fostering is a management that, uh, well, if, you, if you we have sanitary problems inside of the farming home, houses, it's hard to do that. But uh, regarding uh, normality, I would say, uh, inside of the, the farming house, we, we need to do that because we have hyperprolific cells and we need to cross-foster to, to equalize not only the number of piglets but also try to equalize uh, the size and have a better uniformity inside of the, the, the litter. Uh, but we, we should take care on that to, to, to not implement uh, a cross-fostering in a lot of animals. That's the first point. And a second point is that we use a recommended window to do the cross-fostering. What I mean with a uh, uh, special uh, window. We recommend uh, that the animals uh, ingest colostrum from their own mother in the first six, eight hours after birth. Yeah. And we also recommend to do not 
uh, run or do not implement co cross fostering after 24 hours of life. It means that we have a window between six eight hours after birth up to 24 hours of, of life. This is uh, what I mean. How, how about on colostrum? What are the the few few things people could do to in, uh, uh, to increase the uptake of colostrum? Well, uh, starting with a good uh, assistant at, at the birth, yeah, this is a, a main point. Uh, what is also important is that the animal ingest in the first hours because you have a, um, a significant drop in the amount of immunoglobulins in the first hours it, and, and also the capacity of the animal to, to observe the immunoglobulins. It means that you need to, to give the animal the opportunity to ingest, especially the low birth weight piglets, uh, you, you need to give the opportunity to ingest uh, as soon as possible. Uh, one thing uh, that you can do here is, is to give the opportunity to the first animals that were born uh, have a complete access to the, the sow, and later on you can move these animals and, and give the opportunity to the others to, to have mm -hmm. access to the other. But uh, it is also important that the low birth weight piglets have a access all, all the time. You know. This is one situation that you can do. Thank you. That is a great answer, Dr. Bortolosa. And for the last question, based on your experience in other industries, what would be a take-home note for the U.S. swine industry to improve the pre-winning mortality? You already talked about some practice, but which of them we can like, implement here in the swine industry? I would say that uh, the most important thing that you should implement or, or at least uh, uh, do, do a, in a higher pr proportion of animals is, is day one care, based on the, these three things that I told you before, drying, warming, and colostrum ingestion. This is the main three topics that I would say for day one care. And if you can uh, do a, a good job on, on, on cross-fostering, it, it also helps a lot. And based on that, uh, I would say as a third point that uh, you can also increase the number of animals that uh, you assist uh, farrowing. This is important. Fair enough. Very good. In, in, Brazil, in Brazil, uh, if we if we look at the farms that have low the lowest total born, the big farms that have lowest uh, total uh, sorry not total born pre pre winning mortality have a, a good pre winning mortality. Do they have twenty four hours of assistance? You said that there is more assistance there. Out of twenty four hours, how 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 many hours per day do we have somebody in the farming house watching? Yeah, this is an uh, important question. Uh, regarding South America, we, we have a, a higher, a, a lower number of souls uh, attended per person, per employee. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a re relation, depends on the farm for sure, but we have a re relation of one person to 150 or 250 souls. This is the range that we have. It's uh, a big difference com compared with you guys here in in US. Mm -hmm. uh, in our situation, uh, the majority of the farms they have a, at least a person twenty four hours a day, but some of them they uh, work also with uh, eighteen uh, hours a day of uh, a person inside of the farm. Depends, yeah. But this is a, a huge difference comparing comparing or both uh, production systems and is uh, perhaps one uh, key point uh, that can explain the differences that we achieve with pre-winning mortality compared with you guys. Uh, taking our data, uh, I'm going to share that data tomorrow at the presentation, but taking the data that we have in Brazil from Agrines, uh, over 14 years we have around on average, 9% of morta pre-winning mortality. It means uh, in the, in the, the, this uh, number doesn't change 
over the time, I think, uh, mm -hmm. over the okay. 14 years that they evaluated. But if you take in consideration the top 50 farms, the average is 6%. It means we, we wow. can do a yeah. good job on that. Yeah. As I said before, if you do the same things, you are going to, to achieve the same results. We, we have to and some of those farms are are winning 30 plus pigs per sow per year, right? It's not that no. it's it's a low low total born. It's it's no, high yeah. throughput. Yeah, yeah. We we are talking about uh, this this farms. They are winning plus 30 mm -hmm. uh, piglets per sow per year. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Very. Very good information. Very good discussion. I think uh, Dr. Bartoloso, this reminds me. Uh, a work that was recently conducted by Dr. Rada Maker at Iowa State, where the focus was sow mortality, but they implemented a person in the farm just taking care of the sows individually. We call that the medicator in Brazil. And maybe that's a, an area like focus on preventing mortality too. Hey, I know that we, we have a, a, a high number of sows per employee. Maybe if we have someone focus on only on that day one care, on those three things that you mentioned, we could reduce the numbers there and, and, and improving preventing mortality, even in the U.S. Uh, uh, reality. So I think that that was a good message message from from you. Yeah, I saw this presentation uh, last last week at, at IPVS in Rio. It was really interesting, and uh, perhaps it is a possibility to include that inside of the farming house, especially for. As you told, mm -hmm. uh, they won't care. Yeah, no, great no. opportunity. Thanks for the information and bringing the, the reality, the numbers, and, and your experience from 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 the Brazilian uh, swine industry, uh, Latin American swine industry. And that was it for today, guys. Uh, hope to see you guys next next month. And help me thank you, thank Dr. Fernando Bertoloso for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. very much the invitation to be here with you guys. Thank you.